Hey guys, Mr. Zigner again. Uh, we're going to look at lesson 3-5 in our book, Solving Two-Step Equations. And you can see here we're going to start off explaining the whole concept of how to get through a two-step equation. Then we have five examples to look at. Here we go. Well, of course, the main idea, the only idea that we're really trying to focus on today is how we solve two-step equations. And for vocabulary, we'll actually be defining that term. So here it is. Two steps. First, we're going to undo the addition or subtraction first. That's important. Addition or subtraction. It's weird to actually think that that comes first because usually with the order of operations, addition and subtraction is last. But now it's the first thing that we undo. Then we're going to undo multiplication or division. So if you really look at that and think about it, that's the reverse, the opposite of our normal order of operations. And that's going to be important as we go through these problems. So here's our first one, 3t minus 7 equals 14. Now you might think to yourself, well, you've got four answer choices over there, Mr. Zegner. Why not just try each one until one of them works? Well, yes, but that would be an easy way to do it. But we're not always going to have multiple choice situations. So it's really important to be able to get through these steps. So I'm going to start off by rewriting the problem, 3t minus 7 equals 14. Now, if you recall that rule again, first we undo our addition or subtraction. Undo. Undo means the opposite of. So here's our subtraction of 7. So I'm going to undo that with addition of 7. Now, as we did back when we were doing one-step equations, you have to do the same thing to both sides. First is undo what's been done, and then do the same thing to both sides. Both sides of what? both sides of the equation. So if you're going to put a plus 7 on the left side of the equal sign, you're going to need a plus 7 on the right side of the equal sign. All right, let's simplify this and see what we have left. Well, minus 7 and plus 7, they cancel out. All done. But I still have this 3t. So I'm going to bring that down on the left-hand side, and I still have my equal sign. And on the right, we have 14 plus 7. 14 plus 7 is 21. Okay, that was our first step. Now for our second step, I'm going to go back to blue for that, just to show each step. Now I'm multiplying my variable by 3, and the second step in a two-step equation is to undo the multiplication or division. So we're going to undo this multiplication of 3 by dividing by 3. Again, do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Now let's simplify one more time. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 times t is just t. I'm just going to put the t over here. And on the other side, 21 divided by 3, well, that's 7. So it looks like the answer is 7, which is indeed answer choice B. But let's just make sure that works. Don't want to mess up and not check my work. So if I put that 7 back in the original equation, Right there. Let's see. 3 times 7 is 21. And 21 minus our 7. Yep, that is indeed 14. So yeah, that checks out just fine. All right, let's move on. Solve 4 plus 2w equals 18. Okay, so let's see if we can move a little bit quicker this time. 4 plus 2w equals 18. Now, I don't know about you, but I think they're trying to trick us a little bit here by reversing our coefficient variable and our constant of 4. So how about we turn that back into this, 2w plus 4 equals 18. Now, when it's addition, I'm allowed to do that, but you can't do that with subtraction, and a problem like that may be coming. We'll deal with that later, but for now, we can turn around an addition problem. That's called the commutative property of addition. All right. Now let's undo our addition using subtraction. Do the same thing to both sides. Plus 4 minus 4 cancels out. What am I left with? I still have my 2w. It now equals 18 minus 4, which is 14. Now we have to undo our multiplication. Divide by 2. 
Do the same thing to both sides. And it looks like our final answer, after we cancel out those twos, would be W equals 7. All right, well, that is an answer choice, but let's just make sure that that works. So if I put the 7 back in the original equation, let's see, 2 times 7 is 14, and 14 plus our 4 is 18. So yeah, that checks out. Worked out fine. Next one, solve negative 8K. Uh-oh, we have a negative coefficient. Negative 8K plus 7 equals 31. Step 1, undo your addition or subtraction. So we have addition. We're going to use the opposite, which is subtraction. Those are canceled out. Plus 7 minus 7 equals 0. Let's see here. Bring down my negative 8K. And that's going to equal 31 minus 7. Let's see. 31 minus 7 is 24. Now we need to undo our multiplication using division. Let's see. Divide both sides by negative 8. That cancels out our two negative 8s because that equals 1, and 1 times k is just k. 24 divided by negative 8. Remember the trick for this? If you have a negative and a division problem, we had our triangle with a plus and two minus signs. So our 24 was positive, and the 8 is negative. So the only thing left over was a negative sign. So the answer to this is going to be negative, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. Is that one of our answer choices? Negative 3, yes. Now again, it's good to check to make sure that actually worked out. So I've got this negative 8. If I put that in for k right here, let's see if that works. So negative 3. Well, negative 8 times negative 3 is, uh, well, that would be 24. And then 24 plus 7. Yep, that is indeed 31. Perfect. Worked out great. 0 equals negative 4x plus 32. All right, now if you're looking at that and not liking how the negative 4x plus 32 is on the right-hand side with the 0 on the left, if that bothers you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing something like this. There we go. Does that make you feel better? Really doesn't matter which side the equal's on, as long as we haven't changed what the equation is standing for. So here we go. We're going to undo our addition with subtraction. Our two 32's cancel out, leaving us negative 4x equaling, okay, 0 minus 32 would be negative 32, okay? Our final step is to undo our multiplication of negative 4. We're going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, and 1 times x is just x. Now, back to our triangle. Plus 2 minus signs. So the 32 was negative, the 4 is negative, leaving me just a positive sign. So this answer is going to be positive. So all I have to figure out now is what's 32 divided by 4. And 32 divided by 4 is 8. So we end up with positive 8. Let's make sure that works, though. I'm going to put that 8 back into the problem. Let's see negative 4 times positive 8 is negative 32 plus the positive 32. Oh yeah, sure, they cancel each other out. Additive inverse property is what we call that, and that equals 0. Uh oh, word problem. Here we go. Matthew has 64 hits. I'm just going to circle things as we go along here so it's easy to find the numbers I need during last year's baseball season. This was eight less than, oh, here it comes, eight less than twice 
the number of hits Gregory had. How many hits did Gregory have during last year's baseball season? All right, so let's set up our equation. That's what makes this one a little bit harder. We actually have to set the equation up first. Well, Matthew had his 64 hits. I'm going to put that on the right side of the equation because that's the only thing going on there. Now, this was, now was, you see that in the second sentence there? Was is like is. It's indicating the equal sign. Now, that's 8 less than. Now, we talked about this in class. Do you remember? Whenever you see less than, that actually turns around the numbers and variables in that problem. Of course, less than means to subtract, but it doesn't mean 8 minus 2 times Gregory's hits. It actually turns the other way around. It's 2 times the number of Gregory's hits minus 8. 8 less than. So we're taking 8 away from 2 times Gregory's hits. Okay. Well, anyway, there's our setup. That's going to be really important. If you can't set that problem up correctly, you're not going to be able to solve it and get the right answer. Well, moving on. So we now undo our subtraction with addition. Our 8s cancel out over here, leaving us 2G, which equals 64 plus 8. 64 plus 8 is 72. Now we undo, we must undo the multiplication using division. That cancels out our 2's. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 1 times G is just G. 72 divided by 2, or another way of looking at that would be half of 72, is 36. Now, does 36 work in this problem? It is an answer choice, but let's just make sure that's right. So 2 times 36 would be 72, and 72 minus the 8, it, yep, that is indeed 64, so that works out just fine. And there we are, we made it to the end. Thanks for joining me for Lesson 3-5 in our Math Connects book for 7th grade on two-step equations. Uh, check out my blog at zig-math.blogspot.com or, of course, you know my website, mattzigner.com. And we'll catch you guys soon. Finish the questions on my website right below this video. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.